Our Father, we thank you today for your mercy that endures forever. We thank you, everlasting Father, for your thoughts are new every morning. The things you've got to do with us today, we have never heard, we have never seen. Our hearts anticipate your voice. Our hearts anticipate the things you want to say and do in us. We ask that you come to us in mercy. You come to us graciously, converting our soul and bringing us to repentance. You come to us with salvation, shifting us from our former lines into your new position. We appreciate you, everlasting Father, that you will speak your word to us and your word will not be inhibited by flesh. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. We bless our Father for His mercy endure it forever. We are gracious for the things which our God has begun to say and to do in us. Amen. 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 Uh, he has started doing so much. Yesterday, uh, the vision and prophecy was awesome. Was awesome. Was amazing. How the Father came to us graciously, bringing us to new shifts, new positions in truth. Uh, that was not something we saw before we came. Am I right? Uh, that was mercy that came to us. Amen. Uh, we will not lose those works. Those things that are done in us, we will not lose. The Lord will strengthen our hearts. Amen. Uh, how was your night? I, I, I hope you were able to rest a little. Uh, the, the night should be short because uh, the day of God is getting longer. Until there will be no more night. I didn't hear your amen. 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 So don't worry when your night is short. It's an evidence that the day of the Lord is not at night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. This morning we would uh, continue with our discussion on the book of Luke. In the book of Luke. And uh, last week the Lord spoke to us graciously. We will go through what we did last week and uh, connect the thoughts. So that uh, not last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, last week we had the question and answer session. Uh, we will connect the thoughts and then move sharply because our time is not so much. Especially as a minister of the gospel, when you face problems and when you face spirits, they want to change, they want you to change. They want your things and if you sorry they want you to change the way you do things and if you do that they will be happy they are not trying to kill you they just want you to change the way you do the things you do or the way you do things and not be insistent that is what they want to start with they are not minded to kill you. They just want you to change your position. I remember one witch somewhere in town said to Reverend some time ago, ah, ah, you are stubborn. No? She could not bear it anymore. He had to say it to him, ah, ah, man, he's so stubborn. God. <laughs> okay, they just want you to change the way you do things. And she was very bold to say it out. And that was the last time she said it. So, it is you they want to change. And when you understand this, you will see the reason to fight back. And fighting back is not fighting with anything. It is fighting for the doctrine. So that at the end of the day, you can maintain your cause. When we say fighting back, now you think it's some certain prayers you pray in the middle of the night no it is by understanding we fight back maintaining the doctrine staying with the truth continue with the truth be instant in season and out of season serving the lord that is how we are fighting back and that thing that looks weak is very potent in the spirit i tell you If people know how potent obedience is in the spirit, we will have less persons on the mountains. Because half of the persons on the mountains should be busy obeying. I tell you. The Lord will grant us wisdom. 
To finish our course with joy is to finish it with the pleasing of the Lord. Being on the other side where it should be. To please the Lord. Once we can finish with pleasing the Lord, that's okay. That's okay. The Lord is strengthening us. The Lord will strengthen us. The book of Luke, we will just read through to verse 31. Verse 28 to 31, chapter 4, verse 28 to 31. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, it, it is like when a light passes through a glass prism in physics. The prism bends the light. So for your light to pass through the prism and maintain its course is the goal. Remember, we ended last week, last two weeks by saying that spirits want you to change your course. They want you to change the way you do things. They are, they are obstacle they bring before you is to get the light in you to tilt their way. So the labor is to get the light to go through the prism and maintain its course. Did you get that? When the light passes through the prism, the apparent image and the real image form. But there is a place the real image should be. So after you have gone through all the troubles, there is a place you should be because the one who sent you is waiting at the other side and he should not find you elsewhere. That's strong. So the tribulations and the trials and the trouble is to prove if you are the real or the apparent. Did you get that analogy? Because the real light will go through. The apparent will scatter. What is apparent? The one you see immediately. The things that are on the surface. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is that formation that should be in us. That is what should withstand all pressures. That should, watch, should be what withstands all pressures. Not my t-shirt, not my jeans. There are points where you don't remember the t-shirt and the fine boy. Do you understand? Or if it means being rugged, no problem. We will still go through and be found on the other side of the prism. That is the commitment. So for a man to pay attention to his outward, to the packaging, against, as against being found on the other side of the prison, shows that such a soul is flimsy. Such a soul has not learned worth. Did you understand what I said? Sincerely, Jesus would like to be a fine boy doing ministry in a beautiful way. But whether you ruffle him or not, it's not an issue. He will maintain the course. And we found that also with all the apostles that were with him and all the apostles that came afterwards. They don't, they are not going to sell their comfort to buy uh, I mean sell the, 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 the gospel to buy comfort they will never do that if you don't understand them look at the way Paul said he said if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that what to the lost to them that are lost 
whom the gods of this world had blinded their eyes. With that summation. <laughs> that summa the things we are saying are clear. That uh, very bogus English speaker in Nigeria, House of Rep sometime, said it's as clear as Mene Mene Tekofas. And I said it's not clear. <laughs> Mene Mene Tekofas, if it was clear, they won't bring Daniel to interpret it. <laughs> it's not clear. Amen. So, but the gospel for us is very clear. It's very clear. So if it be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. We are not the ones who should be shifting position so that they will not be angry with the things God has revealed to us. Ah, the Lord will help our hearts. The Lord will help our hearts. The mist is like a prison meant to bend you, twist you, and alter you so that you cannot deliver and come to the other side. That's what the prison is like. That prison. So you can call the prison anything. The prison can be, can be accusations. The prism can be, what do we call them? Persecutions, perils, scourgings, spitings of men, evil speakings of men. All that is to try to shift you. Maybe you will not say it like that again. You know, there's that moment where for us, when we came into the waters, one commitment I had in my heart is to live a, in a manner. It's not like it's no longer a commitment. I'm going somewhere. To live in a manner that would help me have an answer for everyone who asks me the reason of my hope. Number one. Number two, to live in a manner that I can have results that this life works because i know that after a while that is that will dissolve the arguments not that as at that time i had arguments around me but i knew it will come because the manners of this gospel is not like what we have always known growing up in church so i put it somewhere in my heart and i pursued it silently you know recently some things came up maybe somewhere sometimes last year things came up and I said to the person around me I said it is, the, it is time to bring out the yam you have pounded do you understand because those who know how to pound will pound in a mortar those who don't know how to pound will pound on the floor the good thing is that everybody now is eating their yam so bring out your own and eat it in public let us see if you pounded it in the mortar. The point where we are is either you follow me or you die in your sin. I have enough to tell you that this thing works. Did you understand what I said? Uh -huh. I could say that. I have enough. If you are not seeing that it is working, ah, a God has blinded your eyes. A God has, I am very sure, a God blinded your eyes. So the troubles is not particularly to make you not have food or make you not have clothes. It's to make you shift your position towards the truth. Psalm 16, verse 11. Brother, help you read for us. Psalm 16, verse 11. Quickly, turn it open. I hope that mic is working. I want to have something to go out. Please read for us very loud. Praise 
Preserve me, O God, that will show me the path of life. In thy presence there is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, pleasures forevermore. Amen. So, it is when you arrive at where God is, that you truly have finished your course with joy. And we must strive to land there, at the right hand, where there is pleasure forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus came down to Capernaum and taught them on the Sabbath day. We saw that in Luke chapter 4 verse 31 where we read too. At the other place in the synagogue, he began to say, he began to say, he did not finish saying because they did not allow him as they opposed him. So he began to teach certain things. He had a doctrine to teach. Let's go there. You will see that they didn't allow him to finish. So that we will not look as if we are always accusing Bible characters. I'll read from verse 24, Luke chapter 4, verse 24. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But, none of, but unto none of them was Elias sent, unto, save unto Sarapta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elysius, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving the man, the prophet. And all in the synagogue, all day in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Another drama began to take place. You can see he didn't finish. This someone, I'm not sure this someone has gotten halfway. This teaching. May the Lord grant us patience to allow him finish what he's saying. Because we have, we are living in a generation that finishes the thought. As the preacher is saying it, you, no, 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 even Lola. And you know it's not true. We conclude the thoughts for God. I like something that he said last Sunday. In that short video clip that was posted on YouTube. He said, don't come to scripture with your thoughts. Come to scripture, allow the scripture, knowing that the scripture has its own thoughts. Allow it to breathe its own thoughts back to you. Because the moment we come, we open Romans chapter this by this. We already have a meaning in our heart. What else would they be saying? Do you understand that? That is what he was trying to say. We can't come to scripture with our own thoughts. That is why it looks as if we are not seeing anything. Our minds are already made up. So we have a generation that will not allow Jesus to free say what he wants to say. We will quickly bring in our own. He was still saying, they stood up in their mind. They know what he's trying to say. And he must not finish saying it. This Joseph's son. This carpenter, this poor carpenter. You know that the place we also call Jesus the carpenter. They call Joseph the carpenter. They also, and under the scripture, they call Jesus the carpenter. Amen. When people who are learned are talking, people who are cutting wood are also talking. This synagogue, I don't blame people. Everybody just comes here, take Bible and read. Stop his mouth. Like uh, daddy was saying yesterday. He says, smite his mouth. He didn't say slap him. He says, smite him on the mouth. The man just said, as the Lord liveth, I stand before you in good conscience. Conscience, who? This wicked boy that we sent to Damascus and came back, said, doing that thing. Punch him, break his teeth, remove some. The 
The Lord will help us. But here in Capernaum, he taught them. I'm telling you, everything that looks difficult for us to receive, there's another person somewhere who is receiving much more. And for me, that is a concern. I'm telling you. It's a concern. Another person had so much righteousness. Self-righteousness is bad. Your heritage is so full in your head. We are, before they will talk, you say, we are Abraham's children. We are not in bondage. We are not, we are, we are not our father. We are not our mother. We are not born, born out of sin. We are not born out of adultery. You have many things in defense of so even Jesus, the son of God, could not reach these people. How could the prophets have reached them? It was not possible. And some of us are like that too. When a preacher is preaching, you are looking narrowly from your student, uh, children's on the school class perspective. You don't know more than what they taught you. You will be looking narrowly at the preacher from your Sunday school perspective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, get in here. That, we got that one. Mm -mm, he didn't get that one. You are marking him. He got it. He got it. He got it. The day it appeared that like he checked all the boxes that you brought. He said, ah, Pastor Dixon, you blessed me today. I was so blessed. Man of God. I was so blessed. Thank you very much. Ah, thank you. You blessed me. That day, he checked all your boxes. He did not even mind to check it. He didn't mean to check it. Some others are even more, are even more terrible. Those ones are positioned with schools of thought. When you are preaching, you say that as Spurgeon. Spurgeon, When you go this way, you say that's Charles Finney. You can't preach one Sunday and they won't put you there or put you there or put you there. How will such a soul grow? Half the meeting, you are calibrating statements into corners. How will such a soul grow? Just to remember that the things that are difficult for us to take, another person is taking in much more. So when we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, you will not have an excuse. The Lord will help us. They nearly threw him down and killed him in, in that city. But in Capernaum, they sat down and he taught them. And we didn't hear any story of anybody attempted murder. So actually, he began and finished his teaching in Capernaum. He finished it. If you can be patient to hear to the end, you will be saved. The wala is to be patient. Is to be patient and not be offended. Thank you, sir. And not be offense. When they say it, they say emphasizing it too much. Kilo day. Ah, uh he -huh. has said it once. It's okay. At a bo. No, sometimes somebody said to Reverend, you, you, you go over your words too much. If you say it once, we have heard. Ha. Hmm. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. The challenge is to be able to endure. The challenge is to be able to endure. The Lord will strengthen us. We have some scriptures before us, I want us to read. Sam, you read the first scripture, Matthew 24, verse 13. Read that scripture for us. Sister Sheung, you read the second scripture, 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 4. Open it quickly. Sister Maria, Isaiah 50, 4 to 5. Sister Mabel, Luke 21. 19. Quickly. Brassam. Raise your voice so that this central mic can pick you for those who are online. The 
the one who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Thank you. Next person, Sister Sheung, quickly. Second Timothy 4, 1 to 4. To be instant, am I right? To be instant in season. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yes. All right, that's true. Hmm. Sister Maria, quickly, Isaiah 54 to 5. Sister Mabel, Luke 21, verse 19. Read louder. Thank you. I, 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 see, I see several things in the scriptures we have read here. A people who are in a generation that want to hear something and we go all out to ensure they get the preachers that will preach it. And another person who says, the Lord has strengthened me to hear and I was not rebellious. Then a third person, the preacher, who will be instant in season and out of season. Whether you have received strength to hear and you are not rebellious, or whether you are, your ear is itching and you are looking for, they will be there and they will be preaching it. Till the earth is no more, my brother, there will be people who will be preaching truth in every generation. And they will be as a witness against those who have vowed not to hear truth. Daddy said something in the course of the preaching yesterday. If at this point, especially, let me add, especially in the West, because I don't know what's going on in other parts, but I know that in this place, in the West, the last 20 years, there have been abundance of the word of righteousness. If at this point, you are still saying faith is faith. He said there's an evil in your heart. I want to add, if at this point, you are saying, you don't even know which one is it. They take this one. Today, they say that one. Ha, ah, you are lazy. Because the materials are the materials are abundant. They are abundant. Pick them and hear for yourself. The Lord will help us. May we not be in a generation that goes about with their itching ear looking for people that will say the things they like. So Jesus said, In patience, possess ye your souls. I will allow us to make comments before we go on this morning to the last part of our discussion. Sister Esther, Sister, uh, okay, let me start from Sister Esther. I'll give you one minute so I can, I'm having three hands up. One minute, Tom. Good morning, mommy and daddy. Good morning, grandma. Good morning, pastors. Praise God. Um, the first point pastor made on the fact that when the enemy attacks us is to make us shift ground. I just want to bring it out a little more to us. The truth is that 
when we face challenges, the first time we, we, we notice we come into these waters, there's this vibe in us to go all out. But along the line, probably our finances will be touched. Uh, the health of our loved ones will be touched. Somebody said to me that when sickness distracts you from serving God, just know that the devil is after you. Now, the way to overcome those things is when, when, so to say, the abundant resources or the things that makes it convenient for us to press is touched, can we still go and can we still be stubborn in the midst of it and keep pressing? Like, don't worry, bring your loved ones that are sick to church. They will not die. Like, borrow money if it will have to take that to make sure you don't miss meetings. Unit meetings, departmental meetings, weekly meetings. Let's not shuffle it in, okay, we don't have money, so let's attend Sunday, attend Wednesday, and leave the rest. What I'm trying to say is that our physical comforts will be touched as a sign of trial if we really have our commitment to these things. And once those things are able to make us shift our ground, then the enemy has won. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sister Fumi, one minute. Good morning, Daddy and Mommy. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, the whole house. I, what I want to say is about offense. You know, at times, you know, in a place, that we, there is no way we, as we are many here, that there will not be offense. You can get offense from anybody. But when the word of God dwells in you richly, no matter the level of the offense, you will not be what? Uh, you, you will not, Satan will not overcome you by telling you, ah, I didn't even expect this kind of a thing in this place. You know, I beg. You know, Satan talks by thoughts he talks to our heart via thoughts but when we allow the word of god to dwell in us richly no matter what we overcome him for example you may be offended and you don't feel like coming to church I beg you're not coming joe but when you remember the word of god that says do not forsake the what the assembling of the brethren the coming together of the brethren the word of god says that what happens to you you have strength to move forward because you it's not that person you are about you are coming there to meet you are coming to church to meet with the lord so that's one of the uh, that's what we are saying this morning that when you have the understanding of the goal it is unto the lord shall the gathering of his people be not that brother that offended me not that sister that offended me if i'm coming to church i'm coming to meet with the lord to serve him to help me to make progress you will discover that no matter the kind of offense that may come our way we always see ourselves making progress thank you thank you very much pastor good morning church pastors good morning mama Daddy and mommy, good morning. I want to add to the list uh, Pastor was giving the other time to say that if at this point we are still saying what I know, I know, there is a trouble. Because that what I know, I know is an evil veil that will not allow us to see the light of what we should know. Now, the thing is, what we know, we were taught so that we can know more. But if we stay with what we know, I will give you an example. When I came to this house, I had a challenge. I loved the word. When Pastor James took, you know, he used to take the morning teaching in those days. By the time he takes morning teaching, my day was made. By the time daddy is preaching, even though he's saying things that were that were hard to understand but i knew in myself this is what i have been prepared for but at some point i begin to ask is this man not adding to the scriptures these things you are saying now how it's not in the scriptures for crying out loud 
Meanwhile, he is busy comparing scriptures to scriptures. Until I came to the understanding that when you compare scriptures to scriptures, you will see beyond the letter. And you will, you will burst into the spirit. Now, I was faced with the challenge of saying, Whoa, man of God, don't confuse me. What I know, I know. And many people have been stuck in that place. And they have not allowed the man of God to finish the message. And in their heart, they are still in the church. Man of God completed the session. Two hours. But out of the two hours, what they had was no more than ten minutes. Why? What I know, I know. Man of God, don't confuse me. We, I, I, I perceive in my heart that there is somebody who will encounter this morning teaching. Whether in the house here or listening online. That the Lord is saying to that what you know is for you to know more. So don't stay with what you know. Because that what you know has become a veil. An evil veil that will not allow you to see what you should know. So please, I beg us. The Holy Spirit of promise is back on it our heart this morning. So that we can groan to see beyond what we know. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. Thanks for those contributions. Hallelujah. The things we know are for, that, for us to know more. For us to know more. They must not constitute blockade for us in moving forward. The Lord will strengthen us. Amen. I said the Lord will strengthen us. Amen. Amen. There is an end of the sayings of God or the teachings of God. The end is salvation. But can you endure it? Can you endure it? Can you stay on to the end? You know, while he was giving that illustration, I remembered back in the days, one of the challenges we had with some of our brethren then was coming this Sunday and come again next Sunday and be able to come again the next Sunday. You come today, you will come next Sunday. And you know, reverence teachings are in a continuum. You come the third Sunday. You see that in that manner, it will never make sense. One year, you have not gathered one thing. It was a challenge. You come today. You will not come next Sunday. Why didn't you come next Sunday? By the time you come again, you say, you understand. Say, go and get the message of last Sunday. You are too busy to get it. In fact, at the point, self, we're not even recording. At a point, we were recording with one recorder that the noise inside it is louder than the voice of the preacher. <laughs> so, if they even give you the audio to record, to listen, many of us didn't even have gadgets to listen to, to use to listen to those audios back in those days. So, you come this Sunday, you won't come next Sunday. You come the next Sunday. And it was nearly impossible to get some persons to consistently come like that for one month. It was nearly impossible. At a point, I just knew that this person will leave. Mm. Just, <laughs> and so we go fight, fight, go finally go. And they left. Because I just knew that the way you are skipping this thing, and every time your complaint is, I'm not understanding. I don't understand. But you keep skipping it. And there's no plan to follow up. I just know that this complaint, I okay, this is that comment. The Lord will help us. Can you stay on it to the end? Sometimes God's servants, our daddy, usually asked those who stay in the house with him if they could stay for at least six months and go away if their stay does not pay them. Have you heard that he say that? Have you heard that he say that? Can you be consistent for six months? Come Sunday, come Wednesday, be part of Tuesday prayer for six months. After six months, you still feel in your heart, I don't understand this thing. Go away, don't waste time. Just go, just go. But you know, the truth is that you, if, if after six months, you, you have not been able to stay consistently, you will even have enough courage in your, in your heart to say, I'll spend the six months, I can go, let me go away. You know that you were not consistent. But as many persons who have done that, 
I've seen them say, ah, before the six months is over, they will start making sense of the whole picture. May God strengthen us. Because the things that are being said, when they are saying, when that is preached, was preaching yesterday, I just asked my dad, ah, it can't get easier anymore. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it can't get easier than this again. They are moving into the core of the faith. And my desire is that it will not sieve us off. That that journey will all be part of it. That we will not fall off. But for us not to fall off, Holy Ghost is saying, stay on. Endure hearing. Endure hearing. There's no way my brother around this thing. Endure hearing. There are many things now that robots are doing for us. But this one, there's no robot to do it for us. There's no more robot. There's no robot to hear for us. We will do the hearing ourselves. So please, let's get back on these materials and sit with them and hear. That you're welcome, sir. Good morning. We're welcome. Um, at this point, I, I feel that. Uh, you know, the problem most of us uh, have with with hearing is that we have a, we have a, a mindset. We have a, a message type before. Either the word preached to you, or the religious word preached to you. That's why before you came into the to God, you have an idea of what is right. So can I even tell somebody else, why are you doing that? It's not for a Christian. Though you are not born again. <laughs> it was there's a mindset somewhere there. For the Jew also, there was a mindset the Lord gave to them. There was a mindset that the religious system gave to them, all of that. When Jesus came, and was preaching kingdom, it was not new. But the kingdom he was preaching was not within the sphere of, and it was not within the sphere of what they can pick. Because it doesn't look like what they know about kingdom. If he was preaching kingdom and they could compare what they knew before with, and with what they are hearing now, there's still a way to... But what he was bringing is not from mass fair. It doesn't look like what, man, what is realistic. So it is going to require faith to abandon what you have known to face what you don't know and to say, I want to know it. Which most of us don't do for a long time. For a long time, we're always going to be switching back to what we knew before. And sometimes what we knew before is so far from what is going on. So the disconnect, you have energy to stay on what you knew before. And you don't have energy to stay on what is, God is saying now. So that disconnect is struggle. The other thing is that, you know, for most of us from this side of, uh, from this uh, part of the world, the gospel we have known before is what God can do for you. So what is that you call the church? What God can do. And what God can do for you are things you can see. I need a car. I need a, a house. I need a wife. I have two girls. I need one more boy. <laughs> so you understand that? So our needs are like that. At the end of the day, we want to, receive, we want to inherit the kingdom that we don't know anything about. <laughs> so now you come to the system where it is about the kingdom and everything you now had in mind before secondary. In the first way, it's like you have been sleeping before. You, you normally wake up during the day and sleep at night. Now they change. <laughs> and now you have to sleep during the day and work at night. You will see that for the first one month, it's like you are getting mad. Because your system has been adjusted, or maybe you are living in the part of the world before, and you have to travel, travel, out, travel out. And you travel, you spend the whole day where you are. And you travel and go on that day. 
So you're going to spend 48 hours a day and all your life, your blood system and brain, what is used to is 24 days. After 24 days, you move to... <laughs> 12 nights, 12 days. Now you're going to have 24 hours a day. Your system is trying to interpret. It can't, it can't find interpretation. So it's like, what... Oh, what, have, what has happened to me? And if you happen to also move again, the next, no, after one week, back to where you were before. Where is it time to adjust back? So you don't have a, a basic of interpretation. You have to just lean to know that I'm alive. I'm not dead. <laughs> and I'm not sick. Because <laughs> you'll be feeling sick. And there's no drug to heal you. You are not sick. It's just that your system is not designed to interpret what you are going through. You will need faith to begin to resolve them gradually until you get used to them. So I feel that sometimes that's the problem we have. And for some people, they are just going to find difficult to let go. They feel like, why, why are you not, why are you not, we have issues with that, why, why not on it? Why are you not talking about it? And as you're on that one, you can't connect to the kingdom of understanding. Because you can't have two eyes. You can only have evil eye. If your eyes be single, your body will be full of light. If your eyes be evil, your body will be full of darkness. And if the light is in you, it's darkness. How great is that darkness? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, sir, for that contribution to our teaching this morning. A beginning and an end have been set for them. And most of the time, before the end of six months, they usually realize that they like to stay on. So for every one of us, there is an end. It is not the end of the world. It is an end that achieves salvation. And we'll find that Jeremiah uh, 29 verse 11. We'll read that last scripture this morning and then we go on to the rest of the service. Verse 11 For I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end and we are saying that that expected end is salvation that expected end is salvation and there's no one straight line for everybody at the same time we can all get to that end at different times depending on how we press in to the things that are being spoken to us the lord is strengthening us can we rise to our feet and pray? We have sat for a while. Let's just rise and pray. Let's trust the Lord for strength. One desire of my heart in this season is that no one will be left out of this present voyage. No one will be left out. And we bless God yesterday as the meeting was ending. The Holy Spirit said to us that we are a numbered camp and we can all arrive. We can all arrive safely. We will all arrive safely. But there is also a commitment to safe arrival. There is a commitment. And today, we are asking the Father to strengthen us. We are strengthened. We receive strength for every heart that is faint. For every heart that is weary. For every heart that is collapsing in the way. Let strength come to every feet. Let strength come to every feet. La panos cavara toso voco genea cana lende los of recle to zozo vai cadilla tajala araputaro to lomba ene baronde akala di televara to lafi zovacra di gelon decene menifara to nefa help us help us help us help us let the barriers be broken the barriers that have hindered our forward movement in any form are they contentions within us are they arguments within us let them dissolve let them dissolve let them dissolve my father let them dissolve let them be no more so that we can journey further so that we can make progress with the gospel you are bringing to us in the name of jesus we are praying for our souls today we are praying for our hearts today in the name of jesus we receive strength we receive strength we receive strength for every soul, for every one soul, in the name of Jesus, to press beyond the discouragement.